The doctors tell me your fever has gotten worse. They say the infection may kill you. Even though my doctor tell me again and again and again and again and again, you may never wake. But still, I wait. Have I ever told you the story when I was a boy? I grew up quite poor. My brothers built us a house with things they found laying around the yard. Wood, metal, tin, cardboard. When it rained, it smelt like hay. But there was a leucomama tree. Strony little thing. Would never grow. I was fascinated by it. When I was seven, I watered it. Every day. Every day I watered that leucomama tree. Weeks went by. Months went by. And the tree grew as tall as the mountain. It bared fruit, big as horse balls. I didn't tell my brothers about this tree. I wanted it to be all mine. One day, I wanted to taste this fruit. So I plucked one. I taste it. Don Hector, it was the sweetest taste I have ever tasted. It tasted like, like caramel. I shared it with my brothers. We have eaten a lot of the fruit from the tree. Then we took some to the village to sell. And one day, I came back and a lot of the fruit was laying on the ground, half eaten. I say to myself, who could do such a thing? Then I thought, maybe it was a quarty. Have you ever seen one? It's the size of a large rat. It's an opportunist. So I built a snare out of wire and branches I found. It didn't take long. The quality was caught in the snare. I wrestled with it. It got loose, but his leg was broken in the fight. It ran up under the house. I sat there all night, waiting for it. And I waited. My brothers called for me, but I didn't answer. I wanted that quality. Family, it came out. It knew I was there, but it was hungry. I fought it. And guess what, Don Hector? I was stronger. The 
merciful thing to do was to kill it. But I kept it. Done, Hector. It lived for quite some time. I believe you will awake, Dun Hector. And I'll be waiting. Shit. one of them, the leader, the blunt head guy from Children of the Corn, he should have at least whooped, whooped his ass, man. Took his pants down and whooped his ass. You know what I'm saying? I mean, a brutal ass whooping. You know what I'm saying? Just to, you know, so he can go tell everybody, you know, you're going to get your ass whooped if you try this again. You know, but it was, it was dope how he scared him up. So it was Hugh... And that big guy. What was that big guy's name? Ah, oh, what was his fucking name? Ah, oh, because uh, I think somebody told me that was the guy on El Camino when he brought the prostitutes to that um that uh that guy at the end that Jesse shot. Spoiler alert. Um, anyway, I forgot what the fuck is his name. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Anyway, that shit was dope, man. That was dope as a motherfucker. What else happened? Um, Gus told Don Hector a bedtime story. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that shit was so fucking crazy. Don Hector knocked the fuck out. He can't move. He can't talk. He don't know nothing. And goddamn Hector telling him a whole fucking bedtime story, boy. If he would have gave him a kiss on the forehead, I would have fell the fuck out, man. I would just fell the fuck out. Like, he would just 
Okay. You get well, my pet. <laughs> I would have fell the fuck out. <laughs> what else happened? Uh, Kim got offered a job at the law firm. Partner. And um, Jimmy, he was like, okay, Kim, you should take the job. You got to do what's best for you. I mean, he didn't like that shit one bit because he don't have his law license. And his whole plan was him and Kim to start their own, you know, like tag team, you know. So uh, Kim's doing good. She's moving up. She got her hands full. So she needs some help. You know what I'm saying? And she got a broken arm. What else happened? What else happened? Mike had to babysit a bunch of Russians. And it was one of them just like, gonna be a problem. You know what I'm saying? It's like he don't wanna listen to Mike. You know what I'm saying? It's always one in the crowd. It's always that one that, you know what I'm saying, that wanna buck. It's always that one that wanna buck. You know what I'm saying? So I feel Mike gonna make an example out of his ass. You know what I'm saying? Cause you see how Mike's looking at him? Are you finished? done I don't see that guy making it I don't see him making it at all you know what I'm saying okay y'all let's get into this shit better call saw season four episode seven love y'all let's get into this shit Drifting apart, they drifting apart. Oh, shit. Yo, yo. What's up with the, the black line split? Is this symbolic for something? What did I tell y'all? Mr. Williams is always right. You know, they started off brushing their teeth, you know what I'm saying, together. His and hers toothbrush, you know what I'm saying? They brushing their teeth together, and they just so happy and jolly. Then, Kim started doing her thing. Jimmy started doing his thing. They both making money. But Kim's doing it legal and Jimmy making his money illegal. You know what I'm saying? And they just start drifting apart. You know what I'm saying? Jimmy's brushing his teeth by himself. Kim's brushing her teeth by herself. And they're laying in bed. Why does Kim's side fade out black? I mean, the song was saying, you say something stupid like I love you. Everything's going so good. Then you say something stupid like I love you, love you, 
we had a beautiful relationship. Then you go and mess it up by saying something stupid like I love you, like I love you. Is that symbolic? Think about it. Is this the breakup? Is this the end? Is this the breakup, the end? Uh, we're four blocks from the courthouse here, so how convenient is that? Now, there's a bathroom, and it's... it's... cute. <laughs> uh... <laughs> We're going to get that cleaned out. Um, there's a shower in there when you're buried in Discovery late at night. This is for the partner. Corner office. Lots of Who is he talking light, to? And that's great for your circadian rhythms. Uh, cherry blossoms. That's nice. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's pretty big. Um, there's a kitchenette down the hall. Uh, it's kind of perfect for snacks or uh, BYO lunch. Get one of those snazzy cure eggs, put that in there. Stick a few potted plants around, make the place nice. What do you think? Oh my God! So no more cell phones? <laughs> nope. This is what the phones were for. So, if you were a lawyer, this would be a great place, right? If I was a lawyer? No. <laughs> big glass high-rise. 40th floor. Big glass high-rise. Yeah, when I'm not on my boat. Oh, my Is God! Is Don hit this up! Excellent, Hector. Excellent. Esta persona. This is the start. Eso estuvo mucho más rápido. Muy bien. Oh, oh my okay. God! I'll just hold off on lunch for a few minutes. Just, just set the tray on the side. Of course, doctor. Volveremos a trabajar en solo un segundo. Holy shit! Sorry, I'll take care of that. <laughs> he know what yams is. He know what yams are. She got a nice ass though. Real talk. Bueno, continuemos. Hector. Hector, estás aquí conmigo? He ain't thinking about mm -hmm. that shit. Muy bien. Yo, when he gonna get his bail? I stay in Paris. He got the form Voltron. So, when does he get his bail? I mean, the chick that's reading the damn cards, the flash cards to him, she's not even paying attention. Like, he has motion. With his fucking finger, he knocked the cup over. He doing all type of shit with his goddamn finger. He's looking at that girl's ass. You know what I'm saying? She had a nice ass. He's focused on the ass, and she's not paying attention. Like, chick, look. Oh, look. He's looking at this girl's ass. He knocked the cup over so he can bend over, so she can bend over and get a good look, a good damn look. You know what I'm saying? But when he's going to get his bail? You know what I'm saying? I got to see Voltron. When is he going to form Voltron? Because when he get the bail, it's a motherfucking rap. Anyone in particular you want me to talk to? Or not talk to? <laughs> talk to anyone. Really, just, just have fun. <laughs> Don't worry, they're going to love you. Are you going to a party? Yeah, hi. Hey, this is Jimmy McGill. <laughs> yeah. Welcome. Hi. Great to meet you. Ron, this is Jimmy oh, McGill. Hi. Hey, Ron. Hey, you got to say I'm obsessed with your tie. One, two, three, four, five, 
six. Yeah, I'm detecting seven, a little jealousy. Eight, you know what I'm saying? Nine, I don't know about y'all. Ten. I'm detecting a little fucking jealousy. Uh huh. No, we're just talking about company retreats. No, it's a great idea. Where are we going? <laughs> Sorry, pal. <laughs> Employees only. Oh, darn it! <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of splurging a little this year. You know, don't want to be outdone by the competition. You know, we're getting Sorry, pal. <laughs> Employees only. <laughs> sure, that's hard to shake off. I've, I've heard 10,000 Waves is supposed to be amazing. I yeah. love that place. Or Carlsbad Caverns. I still think that Taos is number one. I love a ski trip, and I think it'd be good for team building. Taos. Nice. Feel free to jump in. <laughs> We're just spitballing here. Oh, my God. Why do you say that? I don't... <laughs> well, I mean, if you're up for adventure, <laughs> you know where the great skiing is. Well, it's Telluride. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a long drive, isn't it? Uh, that could be part of the fun. You know, uh, rent one of those uh, fancy party scumbag. buses. Stick uh, Sound of Music on the TVs. Everybody sings along. Pretty soon you're there. And I gotta say, the runs at Telluride, they make Taos look like a bunny slope. Telluride, huh? Well, it's, it's worth considering. And parkas. Everybody's gotta have parkas. <laughs> of course. <laughs> no, I'm talking custom parkas. Uh, two words, client development. They see all of you out there cutting the powder and you're matching Schweikert and Coakley parkas. Well, you're going to make an impression. You will thank me later. You certainly don't think small. <laughs> no. <laughs> Shit. You know what? Aspen. Hey, that's where you want to go. Aspen is like Telluride on steroids. You got shopping, you got restaurants and spas. Oh, and shit. Talk no, about no, client no, no, development. No, 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 it's a billionaire's no. playground. No, Jimmy, Aspen is like a nine-hour bus ride. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Nine hours. That, that is a long time to be sitting on a bus. Yes, it is. But what's that I hear? I'm a private charter jazz. And I'm sorry, I'm very busy right now. I'm transporting 56 distinguished attorneys to their amazing destination. Aspen, here we come. Still the show. Still the show. Still the show. On a summer's day. Peter, Vince, where in the fuck do y'all get the soundtrack music from? Where the fuck do y'all get this shit from? The lemonade springs in the bluebird sings in the big rock candy mountain. The big rock candy mountain. Where the buffalo sings in the mountain springs in the big rock candy mountain. The big rock candy mountain. The big rock candy. The big rock candy mountain. Making progress on the stroke scale. He started out of 30, and that number is steadily coming down. He's out of 22 right now. You'll see, this was an especially productive session. Hmm. 
I wonder if you're going to see him looking at them yams. Esta persona está contenta? Muy bien. I know it may seem like a small thing. Okay. That same exchange would have taken four times as long a month ago. And a month before that, he couldn't respond at all. Oh, his vital signs have Oh, there she go, there she go! Also, there she go! I've been tracking his progress using the SIS with particular focus on hand mobility. <laughs> Has he done that before? Only when he see yams! Yeah. That was likely an involuntary <laughs> movement. <laughs> yeah, we want that shit back, Gus. Check it out. Yeah, now you know what you gotta do. You gotta put ass all around him. Nothing but ass. You know it. You know it, and I know it. Do you think it. that was purposeful? He still know what ass is. His recovery has been remarkable. And my gratitude to you is beyond the words. Are you sure? Hector's progress is very promising. With sustained intensive care, he may eventually learn how to talk and even walk again. Perhaps we should temper our expectations. I believe the Pilot Marina is ready. Just one more. Carefully shaped to keep from damaging the world. How big a pop are we talking about? I bet you it was that little shit. I bet you it was him. Was it him? Oh, that's him right there. Yeah, 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 Mike not speak that shit. I know he's trying to fit in, but he looks so fucking stupid. I swear to God, he looked like he's having a fucking midlife crisis. He's a fifty-year-old rapper. What can I do you for? This you, Saul Goodman? Uh, that's right, officer. <laughs> you, uh, you want to know where I got it? Off a drug dealer who got sprung today because he was using a drop phone that you sold him. That's a long time. I mean, how can you be sure it's the same guy? Seriously. Officer, look, you were right. I was wrong. Right? So just do me a favor. Let's just shake hands, avoid the paperwork, and we just go home. Do you a favor. I was asking you for a favor. Fair enough. I asked you nicely, and you told me to go screw myself. I don't... I don't think I used those words. I, See you around. In German, it comes from two words. World plus strength. Yeah, I guess. What's the latest? Before we can continue, we must build a new concrete form and strain the rebar. I'm so sorry. I'm happy to explain the delay to Mr. Frank. You don't worry about Mr. Frank. He just wants to see it done right. Let me ask you a question. Of course. What would happen if we sent Kai back to Germany? I knew it. I fucking knew it. 
No, I knew it. Kai is my best demolition man. Sure, he's a Cosmo, but, but, but he's a good boy. They all are. Well, maybe that's the problem. They're boys. Well, yes. But we need young people to do this work. Well, maybe you and I will do it. You have done a wonderful job, Michael. You brought everything we could ask for. But you can't keep men locked away forever. They need fresh air, a change of scenery, and... Um, you understand? Hands? I don't know. Hmm? Hands? Rest and relaxation. Precisely. This is what they need. Our and our. Prost, Michael. I would have died if you would have said yams. Prost. Two and a half years. Yeah, they always go for oh, the next. Oh, man. Come Goddamn. PD didn't make it sound promising. <laughs> Guys, he's just a burnout. He's trying to soften you up for an easy deal. All right? There's no way you do that kind of time. You goddamn right. You goddamn right. Wait, uh, wait uh, what do you mean? I'm a bounce. <laughs> I got places I can go. And now, uh, no, that's not a good idea, you all. Better than going in. <laughs> Come on, you'll have a warrant on you. And that shit doesn't go away. You know, three years from now, you're pulled over for a broken taillight. And now you're not just a guy who shoved a cop. You're a guy who shoved a cop and ran. But I just won't drive with a broken tail like. <laughs> Sooner or later, they're gonna catch up with you. He didn't get D.B. Cooper. <laughs> you were funny as fuck, man. Why don't you, uh, why don't you give me a shot at this? I, I think I can fix it. Yeah. Yeah. What if I told you you're not going in? Like, not at all? Oh, uh, what are you gonna do? That's what it's gonna take. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Never. Right? Just don't skip. How are you gonna do that? You ain't even a lawyer. A lawyer. Dude, I don't need to be a lawyer, right? <laughs> I'm a magic man. You have a little faith in me? I knew it. I fucking knew it. He gonna get Kim to, to be his fucking lawyer. Uh, you've been selling drop phones? On the street? Kim, I, I just, if we could, uh, look, Kim. Here's what I'm thinking. I did a little recon, and the arresting officer, he has a DUI, you know, eight years ago. And he's been put on desk duty twice. I know he has anger issues. I can attest to it, right? So, we get him smelling like a distillery and we piss him off in court now now he will take the bait he will lose his cool in front of the judge a little stumble in there just for dramatic effect and i have some thoughts on how to engineer that but you get the gist next thing you know case dismissed I will look into this. I'm not making any promises, but if it is as bad as you say it is, I don't know, maybe there is something I can do. Maybe. Uh, thanks, Kim. This I really appreciate it. Okay. Oh, I got it. Hope that wasn't a bribe. Wow, that would be one sad bribe. <laughs> Not on my salary. Do you have a minute to discuss a case? Sure. I got two minutes. I can't help but think you guys are reaching with this one. Where have I heard that before? Babineau? Babineau. Really? Doesn't seem like your kind of client. I disagree. To start with, the whole thing was just a misunderstanding. Pickpocket with a rap sheet attacks a cop in broad daylight? That's a misunderstanding. Uh, I would not call it an attack. And realistically, we should be talking misdemeanor. It's battery on a PO. 
That's 18 months plus a year of bitch time. I know what you're asking for. It's excessive. He has a prior. The same officer arrested him three well, years... years ago, but Babineau didn't recognize him. He, he didn't even know he was a cop. The guy drove an unmarked car. He was in plain clothes. He, he had his back turned. This is unequal justice. In this case, the officer was not injured at all. He was hit with a bag of sandwiches. How can you justify giving Babineau 18 months? Close a year. He has no history of violence. There is no negotiation here, Kim. And honestly, I don't understand why you want anything to do with this. On one side, I've got a decorated police officer doing his job. On the other, you have a professional thief who threw him to the ground. And our only witness is a scumbag, disbarred lawyer who peddles drop phones to criminals. Hey, Black Lives Matter! You don't know the whole story. I'm gonna go talk to him right now. I need you to back my play. Does that mean what I think it means? He's gonna call you after I talk to him and you and I have to be on the same page. Hugh can't run. He's gonna have to put on his big boy pants and go to jail. Oh, shit, at least for a little while. There's no way around it. He's not gonna do what they're pushing for, I promise you that. But yeah, no matter what, he's, he's gonna have to do some time. Well, thanks for trying. Jimmy, he can't jump bail. You'll back me up, right? Good. Damn. I mean, if you say this is a, the only way we can legitimately do this, well, it's the only way. Damn. So Fuck. You're, you're going to tell him to stay put? Yeah, sure. He's not going to do it. You do your thing, I'll do mine. Jimmy, come on, what is that? What? Mean? Don't worry. Oh, shit! She got some crayons and some markers, some paper. Like, what the fuck is she about to do with all this shit? Like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? What's, what's, I don't, I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I don't know. What else happened? Um, Hector started moving. He don't have his bail yet. I want to know how he going to get his bail. That's what I want to know. But he started moving. So Gus reviewed the tape where the nurse was showing him and saying he has movement. The only thing Gus want to know is, Dun Hector, is he in his right mind? Do he still know what's going on? You know what I'm saying? He, he, he wants to keep Hector in that same state of mind. He don't want him to be a vegetable. You know what I'm saying? So, we know Hector is Hector from Breaking Bad. We all know, okay? And the, uh, the sign, if that chick would have paid attention, when that nurse came in and bit over and that showed out that, that ass, and he was like, He started going crazy. When that nurse came in there, she first she was showing all type of flashcards. Okay, you see this one? Huh? You see that? You see that, Hector? Can you say that? Look at that. He was like. But soon as that nurse came in there, he knocked that cup over and she bent over, that motherfucker went crazy.
And the damn nurse didn't even notice that shit. Like, you don't notice this motherfucker goddamn about to have any fucking ejaculation right in front of you? You don't see that shit? <laughs> Yo, we about to go to the next episode because I want to see what the fuck Kim is putting together with these crayons and these magic markers and shit. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep this shit rolling. I love y'all. Better Call Saul, episode 8 coming. Love y'all. And now, now, put on, baby. And now, now, put on, baby. And now, now, put on, baby. in the pool, I'm swimming for about an hour.